REZ 2022-10. The Campus Transitional Care Facility is located at 2193 Highway Road. It is currently EA. The request is for a PD. It will have well and septic, and this involves 23 acres. Mr. Dillard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, the request is to rezone approximately 23 acres, currently zoned EA, to a non-residential plan development in order for a transitional care facility uh, to be developed. Uh, potential facility is not currently licensed for substance abuse recovery, and support counselors may visit the site. However, ongoing treatment would be performed off-site. Uh, the applicant is planning on developing the property in phases, with a maximum, maximum occupancy of five residents per house and one resident per cabin. These are the 23 acres here. This is the view from Howell Road of the current property. This is the overall proposed site plan, including the house you just saw on the previous slide. You note these six houses and the 12 cabins. There is also a mixed multi-purpose uh, facility in the north, including a deck for a pond, could be used as a chapel, as well as a gym, possible pool, and an equipment shelter for maintenance of the property, uh, possible agricultural. Uh, uses as far as a mixed use for a PD. Overall, staff found the request inconsistent with the character area, but consistent with the goals and policies of the comprehensive plan. The planning Commission heard the request and the concerns of the neighbors. <coughs> there is a signed petition in opposition of approximately 450 signatures and approximately a dozen letters or so addressed to the commissioners. The planning Commission heard the request at their uh, May meeting and ultimately recommended denial of the request at 7 to 3. Any questions for Mr. Dill? Okay. We'll open up the public meeting portion of the meeting. Is there anyone in there? Well, I understand that there is someone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request. Uh, please come forward. Wait. I'm sorry, I recognize the young lady right back here. <coughs> Are you the actual? Spokesperson for this group. <coughs> is there a spoke? Let me. I'm sorry. Is there a spokesperson for the group? I, I apologize. Then let's allow the spokesperson to speak because we will have five minutes. And if this is the official spokesperson, okay, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. I need you to state your name and your address for the record. Michael Henderson, 2581 Howell Road. providing an individual with the necessary tools to live a successful drug-free life. Some of the facts presented here initially may appear irrelevant to, some, to a simple rezoning of the property. However, when that property encapsulates an entity that will impose a threat to public safety, environmental consequences, and economic impedance to the surrounding properties of the taxpayers in this community, the validity of the facts will prove to be irrevoc irrevocably irrelevant. I, as an individual, have a history that will prove to justify my ability to stand before and represent this community's concerns regarding the rezoning case REZ-2022-10. I was addicted for 15 years. During the addiction, I was in and out of rehabilitation facilities, county jail, and detox centers. At the end of the addiction in 2003, I served seven years in the Georgia Department of Correction. During those seven years, I completed numerous drug rehabilitation programs and graduated with honors from Okefenoke Technical College as a certified manufacturing specialist and computer technology level applicant. I was released in April 2011 after completing my last year in a stringent program at the Valdosta Transitional Center. Upon my release, I owned a few pair of clothes, I was without a bank account, a seriously less than desirable background check, no vehicle, no license, with just enough money for the first and last month's rent, security deposit, and a power installment. I walked until I saved money to buy a bicycle. I rode the bicycle until I saved for the costly fees that were required to reinstate my driver's license. And then I saved to obtain a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Today there are four of those vehicles in a government agency career 
and a home and two, two and a half acres. But what's most important to me out of all of this is my wife and two kids that live with me less than two miles from the proposed property to be rezoned. I am an ordained minister and I go back into rehabilitation facilities to encourage those who are where I once was. I have been clean since 2003. On the addicted side, I was a resident of programs that did not work and programs that did. One had in-house doctors and certified counselors with state funding coupled with a great curriculum, yet it failed to remain open due to the lack of detail in the housing of the addicted. Today, I only, I only, only a few programs that are successful. Through my research, I discovered that the successful programs in this area often discharge residents due to their inability to complete programs, and they are sometimes referred to the very program that will be on the property to be resolved. I'm not against the idea of recovery. I'm against the idea that lacks the proper structure in detail to make recovery successful. For without that, the idea becomes a setup for failure for the residents of the entity within the property and the public safety disaster for the law-abiding taxpaying residents of this community. We as a community are not only fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, grandparents. We're a community of certified mental health representatives, certified and active law enforcement, state certified correctional officers and ordained ministers. This community's qualifications validate our ability to assess the entity within the proposed property to be rezoned and make the determination to request to deny the rezoning case. This facility is not regulated, licensed, certified, or governed by any local, state, or federal agency. Document one, at the bottom of the last paragraph of the official document submitted by the Lowndes County Planning Commission, it says, overall staff found the request inconsistent with the character area, but consistent with the goals and policies of the comprehensive plan. The community does not know what that comprehensive plan is, but it does not line up with the community's comprehensive plan. At this point, in the last sentence it states, at this point, it is the hope of staff that the benefit of the proposed use brings to the community and the proposed site plan with its buffering and setbacks will mitigate and potentially uh, negative effects on surrounding properties. I'm sorry, but we are not we are not ready to base the security of our family and our children on hope. That's why putting snakes in the front yard and putting my child on a tricycle and sending her out saying, I hope she don't get bit. This has to be a guarantee. It can't be based on hope alone. So the program summary, as I reviewed it, I found some things. Page one, last sentence. The entity reserves the right to change, amend, or waive the fee or regulation if the leaders of the entity deem necessary, meaning that they can change any policy that they want within their program and the community can know nothing about it. Page two, first paragraph, last sentence. Clients will be required to have Life 360 on their phone at all times for accountability purposes. Everyone, that is an app on a phone. It can be suspended, it can be paused, it can be taken off. And anyone, who is going to actually monitor this app 100% of the time to ensure where they are? Page two, second paragraph, four sentence states, to leave the property, residents must have someone in phase two or higher with them or, or an approved family member or staff member. This is phase one, meaning the resident who is there less than two months can leave and take a phase one resident just over a month sir, with them. All right, the time's up, sir. I just have, I'm reading directly from this, and this is all I have. I understand. I understand. More time. How much more yeah. do you say? I've ordered? Maybe three, two minutes. Tops, I'll go through it fast. I will not go off sidebar. I will read this exactly as it is written, sir. Okay. I'll, I'll give you two minutes. Okay. Page three, paragraph three, sentence it says, a resident can leave the property by himself and must be back by his curfew by 10 o'clock. This is phase three, meaning that the resident who is there for three months can leave the automobile by themselves with nothing but Life 360 between them and the community. The way this appears to the community is that the entity is safe, that a resident who may come to them five, 10, 15 years or more is ready to be on their own in three months. I can personally tell you that there is such thing as a suppressed dormant trigger. The trigger for an addict is an event, an item of smell, nearly anything that enters the senses that reminds the brain of the pleasure center, and it can be set off at any time. We have questions. What is so important for the entity to achieve rezoning in the agriculture and residential areas? Why is the entity attempting to rezone residential area within the Valdosta city limits in which they were turned down in the recent past, and when that failed, they came to our community to attempt the same thing when there is a plethora of availability in zone approved areas for them to establish a facility. Why does the CEO of the entity not build this facility on 35 acres hill? Why were the county's guidelines transgressed by not opposing the sign 15 days as a requirement that was within that last thing? 
I just want to ask the board this. When you're in your garden planting and watering, your yard trimming and cutting, are you constantly looking over your shoulder? When you see your kids and grandchildren out to play, do you have to be out there with them every second? If you answer, if your answer is when you head down, lay your head down the ladder, are you terrified of having forgotten to lock or close something? If your answer is no to these questions, then why would you approve something that would make this community's answers be yes? And if your answer is no to these questions, then for the sake of this community, it should be the same no when you vote on the rezone. Thank you for your time and the extra time. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Henderson? Mr. Henderson. Any questions for the speaker? Go Thanks, sir. Thank you. Uh, anyone that would like to speak in support of this request? Do we only get one person? Yes, sir. Only one person? You have seven minutes just like the other side had. So if you want to come forward and speak. Ma'am, we're, we're done on that side. Mr. Commissioner, I'm, I'm here on behalf of the Dean Lee. Please come forward and state your name and address, please. I'm Mark. I'm Mark Perry, Mayor of Council for Dean Lee, the applicant. Do we have the opportunity to have myself open and have someone else? I'm sorry. Staff as well? You have seven minutes. Whoever the speaker wants to be needs to. to we'll give you the seven minutes just like I did the other side. Do we have more than one person speaking? Yes, you, you can, can within that seven minutes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. As I said, my name is Mark Perry. I'm here uh, representing Redeem Living in this application. You've already heard from Mr. Dillard what the application is for, so I won't go into that anymore. But, um, who is Redeem Living? Um, Redeem Living is an organization that's designed to offer a structured, faith-based, sober, sober living facility. In just a moment, I'm going to let Mr. Casey Corbin uh, and Mr. Brent Moore stand up and speak uh, a little bit more directly into what that is. But, they are a registered 501c3 nonprofit organization. It's a locally organized and operated organization that's been here in Lowndes County for six years and has been doing great service here in this community. Um, they've been in different locations and have had letters of support to many of this board from direct next door neighbors of previous facilities. The campus that is being proposed is um, a long term project. It's uh, potentially a 10 year build out. With $3 million infrastructure. Uh, the, the impact of the area is very minimal. Um, very little traffic added. The business would not be regularly serviced as a normal business would. It's not a business. In fact, it's a residential facility with normal folks. Uh, it does, in fact, meet the comprehensive plan that you've heard. This is a ministry, and this is a ministry for our community and will serve it well. We understand their fears and concerns. Um, the gentleman that just spoke makes some very valid points, but I think much of that is coming from a position of lack of education and understanding about what this particular facility does. I am going to let Mr. Corbin, who's a licensed clinical counselor, stand up and speak to that. I know we're very short on time. And then the founder of this facility is Mr. Brent Moore, who's also here to speak. Please state your name and address for the record. Hey, I'm Casey Corbin, 2436 Motherwood Drive, Oscar. Um, I'm on the board of Redeem Living, which is again a 5013C nonprofit organization, and I've worked as a certified substance abuse counselor for the last 25 years in this area, um, working with thousands of addicted loved ones and their families, and every component of the continuum of care that includes detox, 28 day group rehabs, long term residential and outpatient, and recovered residence homes. Um, to clarify some of the things that we're prepared to present, no one program works, it's a continuum of care. What Redeem Living is, is not a halfway house. It's not a treatment program. It's not regulated because it doesn't have to be. We don't do treatment. We bring stable people that are not in the early stages of recovery, but have achieved the middle stages of recovery and can uh, go home if they want to. This is after they go to treatment. Then they can come to their home or they can come to a recovery residence home like Redeem Living. We provide an additional level of security, accountability, structure, and support for them that they would get at their home. We have, um, uh, it's safer for all involved. Um, sorry about the time. You have, you have a total of seven. Okay, all right. Um, 
to imagine what this is like, I'd like to use a train car, like four train cars for us to consider. The first one might be detox, <coughs> where someone would choose to go into a detox. The second one would be um, going into like a 28-day program. The third would be like a long-term residential treatment program. Those three are insurance-driven or paid for by entitlements from taxpayers, and that's where the recidivism happens. Like the person who spoke with the opposition, yes, we see that. We see a lot of people cycle through those again and again and again because they don't go to the fourth car. They don't go to the last part where they achieve long-term lasting recovery. I'd like to say that Redeem Living, we do not um, accept scary people. We do background checks. We only have people that are in sobriety and are in stable, steady sobriety. And we accept people that um, uh, are there because they've made a choice, voluntary, very wise choice, to be able to continue their recovery. And they're go they have a lot to lose. They're trying to get back to their wife and their kids. They're going home for weekend visits. They're they're making a wise decision to be able to say, we're, we're not talking about a halfway house like a transition center from prison. We don't take inmates. We're not talking about um, uh, a treatment program where someone's not stable yet. The, these people have exited a treatment program. They come to us for additional stability and support. Uh, as far as security goes, uh, Redeem Living goes above and beyond with uh, security. The first level is peer accountability, in that somebody's roommate can tell you. <laughs> I may not be able to tell when somebody's in for three laps that's in recovery. You may not be able to tell that, but an addict, especially early in their recovery, can tell. They're the best line of defense, and they have to report if somebody is acting odd or if we think that they're going to relapse. The uh, community and their housemates, the community at large, is the best line of defense for knowing that. Uh, then Redeem Living goes above and beyond. We provide security uh, that our compensated staff members, our current compensated staff member, has five years of sobriety and is uh, for both the neighbors and for the residents. All right, sir, your time. You, we've got about 12 seconds left. <coughs> We're just forcing if Mr. Moore wanted to speak. There's about two minutes left. Two minutes and six seconds. Good evening. My name is Brett Moore. My address is 3850 Moore Road. So I do want to once again ask uh, for uh, just, I first want to say this. Redeem Living is not a city place. It's not a place where anybody would be concerned. We've operated for five years. We have never had a neighbor complain. We have never had an issue. Six years actually we've been operating. We've never had a neighbor complain. Never had a neighbor cause any problems. On the contrary, the neighbors have actually reached out to us for help. Uh, gas help them move, different stuff like that. These men are normal men. They can live anywhere in this community. They already do. We could potentially still get this property and we could move men into this house and there was nothing that anybody can do as y'all it is a, a non-regulated um, situation where people can live in a house. I, I don't want to uh, make light of anybody's concerns, but I do want to make sure that I do address any concerns that may be had. Um, we will not, once again, we will not be housing anybody in that facility with any violent background, any sexual related assault charges, any habitual crimes where they would not be able to be allowed to live anywhere else in this community. We'll go above and beyond that. I don't see why there is a reason why that anybody that has already spoken could live on the same road after he's been an addict, a confessing addict. Why can't we? And that's my biggest question. That I have. What is the issue that we have found to make this where it's not a possibility? There's been a lot of statistics thrown around through uh, I'm sure y'all have received emails and notifications and the website that has been uh, presented by the uh, opposing party. And there's a lot of statistics thrown around about a halfway house. I did some research on faith-based sober living facilities and I came up with a list of everything that I found where it's a dangerous situation. Okay. If you look at there was absolutely time nothing. Time for seven minutes. Speaking of commissioners, I'll ask, do y'all have any 
comments or any questions uh, for those that were here in support? Questions or comments? Thank you, Would you be willing to put up a privacy fence and a public fence between your facility and the east? Yes, sir. Uh, there, there was two people that addressed uh, at the Planning and Zoning Commission. One of them was uh, Mr. McDougal, who was concerned about his drainage issue. Uh, we will make sure that whatever we do, we do not negatively impact his drainage issue. If anything, we'll do anything we can to help him uh, by putting him in a pond. It should help him as well. Uh, and then we won't do anything to negatively impact his land. We'll be glad to work directly with an engineer on that. And Ms. Canada, the direct neighbor to the, to the right of the property, did request a privacy fence. I told her I would put a privacy fence on her entire property line at no cost to her. And we are meeting all the minimum setback requirements that have, uh, have been proposed as far as the buffers and everything else. Who we'll actually exceed? Well, I'm the right neighbor. I'm on the seven kids. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
three to two. So we need another motion. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the rezoning request with uh, the two conditions that they spoke about in the uh, with the fence, with the fencing and the drainage issue. With the two, those two conditions. Good. We have a motion then to approve the request with the conditions, with those two conditions. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion on the motion? All right, I'll call the vote. All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your right hand. Again, mine is to support the motion. Okay. Motion passed. Thank you.